Your worm bin should have a lot more life in it than just worms. We're going to talk about how to boost the micro populations in your new worm bin on today's video. My name is Steve Churchill and this is the Urban Worm Company. Guys, I'm really excited about this topic today. So I've got a few hobby horses when it comes to starting a worm bin and quote, Dirtying it up before you ever introduce worms to it is one of those. I learned the hard way twice that you just can't put shredded paper and fresh organic waste into a worm bin, add worms and expect them to thrive. Worms need a lively environment in order to thrive. And I didn't succeed until I killed two batches of worms because I didn't know this. If you've got an established worm bin, this isn't an issue for you. If you've got composting worms that are eating and reproducing, then your current environment is doing just fine. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to get a running start to boost your micro population which will speed up decomposition and make for a hospitable habitat for your worms in a new worm bin. So we cover worm bin startup and bedding choices in our ultimate guide to vermicomposting, a massive blog post that we've got on the Urban Worm Company website. I converted it into a PDF that you can download right now. Just click this little link over my left shoulder and you can download this 60 plus page ebook that covers everything from the basics of vermicomposting on up to expert level stuff. It's an awesome resource and I've gotten great feedback about it. So your most crucial choice is what you start your worm bin with. You're likely gonna wanna start with a common household waste like shredded paper or shredded cardboard. These can work, but your best bet is to start your bin with already living material. My first recommendation is to start with existing vermicompost if you can get your hands on any. Now, this is the easy button. So I was a military officer for 23 years and a saying I heard and said many times was that if you're not cheating, you're not trying. That didn't literally mean cheating on tests and evaluations. Instead, it meant bending the rules of the game and your benefit. There's no honor in trying to succeed the hard way and you don't wanna make it a fair fight. If you can use your own vermicompost or someone else's as a starter material, please do it. Now there may be worms in this vermicompost, but there's probably not enough to start a new worm bin, but you will have a thriving micro population with billions of bacteria ready to attack your food waste and bedding material. But I wouldn't consider vermicompost itself a bedding. It likely already has a carbon to nitrogen ratio that's too low. So you're gonna to wanna to increase it with additions of some other carbon rich bedding that we'll get to shortly. If you don't have any vermicompost, then try to find some leaf mold which is a fancy way of saying decomposed leaves, typically from last year, maybe even the year before. You might be able to find this in your yard or maybe a neighbor's yard. It's gonna be dark and crumbly and it's gonna be teeming with bacteria and possibly even fungi that thrive in woody, carbon-rich material like that. You won't need much of this stuff to make a difference. Even if you start with mostly paper, adding decomposed organic material like leaf mold will help you get off to a good start. So while leaf mold is a great way to transport life into your bin, not all of that life may be welcome. You can be introducing roly-polies, mites, maybe ants, and other critters into your bin. Most of these tiny animals are great co-composters. They coexist with worms perfectly well and help to shred and fragment organic waste, but they may be unwelcome in an indoor worm farm. Locally sourced compost is a good idea too. The overall population and diversity of the microbes is likely to be lower than vermicompost, but you're still better off with it than without it. Now you notice that I said locally sourced compost. Bagged product from a big box store may or may not have the biology you're looking for. I also really like aged horse manure. Lots of horse farms will leave their manure to sit in a large pile. And over time, that manure will lose its round apple shape and will start to look like a really loose soil instead. I love using this stuff in worm bins. And when I was first starting to experiment with vermicomposting for the purpose of selling worm castings, I used aged horse manure from a local farm. But I like aged manure less than I used to. There are two things to watch out for with horse manure. The first is weed seeds, and these have always been around. Aged horse manure is notorious for having viable weed seeds that go straight through a horse's gut and out its rear end. If that manure hasn't been subjected to the high temperatures you get with hot composting, those weed seeds will remain intact. Secondly, horse manure may very well have something called persistent herbicides. These are specifically formulated herbicides sprayed on hay that aren't harmful to humans or animals, but they will not break down even with hot composting. They target broadleaf weeds and thistle, but if you use these castings in your garden, they may be deadly for certain veggies, especially tomato plants. If you don't mind the risk of weed seeds making it into your vermicompost, and you know the horse manure isn't tainted with persistent herbicides, which honestly requires knowing a lot about the hay that they were eating, then I'd go ahead and give horse manure the green light. I also love a store-bought product called pit moss. It's made from recycled 
paper and other cellulose products. There's a variant called Pit Moss Prime that has something that amounts to a microbial stimulant or an additive. The brass at Pit Moss can't make this claim, but I will. Pit Moss Prime is not sterile, and I think worms will take to it right away by itself. And you'll see a link to order Pit Moss Prime in the video description below. You'll also notice a product on my site called the Worm Success Bundle. A lot of people use this to start their worm bins. They also use the Worm Accessory Bundle, but the Worm Success Bundle is just a little bit different. It comes with two bricks of cocoa core, which can make a nice fluffy bedding. But cocoa core has got no life in it whatsoever. So I've also included two pounds of our micro rich worm castings to help kickstart the population. I've gotten great feedback on this product from new worm bin owners and it's been surprisingly popular. You can also use shredded paper and cardboard for your initial material. But just like the coconut core, there won't be much life in these things. This is why I'm always recommending people who start a worm bin with paper and cardboard to add a small amount of food waste in the bin well before the worms ever arrive. That will serve as a magnet for bacteria which then ought to take hold in your bin. So I've given you a few good options here, but do you know what I like more than each of these separately? A combination, maybe using leaf mold with paper and a small amount of food waste, or cocoa core with worm castings and pit moss. A good diverse mix is a great idea and reduces your chances of killing all your worms like I did. I use an analogy where I compare worm bins to fires. They're both far easier to keep going than they are to get started. When you're starting a fire, you need the right amount of air, dry kindling, maybe some slightly larger sticks, and of course the spark or flame to try to get it to catch. But man, once it's lit up, there's not much you can do to screw it up. And your bin is no different. You've just got to get it going and it's easy street from there. I know I've mentioned microbes a ton in this video, but I really haven't differentiated between bacteria and fungi at all. Most vermicomposts are highly bacterial, especially if you're vermicomposting food waste or manure. But if you're looking for a more fungal vermicompost, you should really try to add leaf mold and continue to add woody material like wood chips in your bin that fungi will love to attack. Okay, gang, I've given you a lot to think about here. Starting a new worm bin isn't rocket science, but it's a bit more complicated than just adding worms to moist paper in an apple core. You've got to foster an environment where microbes will thrive. And the more lively your bedding is from the get-go, the more lively your worm bin will be. Do that, and I guarantee you'll get off to a better start than I did. Come see us at urbanwormcompany.com, and we'll see you on the next video.